welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who's bought and paid for, and this video we're breaking down the new trailer for The Boys Season 3. It's filled with some major plot details, easter eggs, and things to look forward to when the show releases in June. Throughout this video, we're going to be going over it all, and full spoilers ahead for the breakdown. There's a big thing from the comics I think we could be leading to, but I'll give you another warning just before we hit that. Without the way, thanks for clicking this, now let's get into The Boys Season 3. Okay, so the last trailer gave away a lot of hints towards where things could be going, and we know that Soldier Boy will be playing a major part in the season. Played by Jensen Ackles, Soldier Boy in the comics basically had the Captain America backstory, and he was listed as being the first superhero, even though Stormfront actually was. In the source material, there were several versions of the character, and the first one died in World War II, and then the mantle was passed to someone else before a third Soldier Boy was brought in who was the main one that popped up in the run. In the comics, he was sleeping with Homelander at one point, and it's going to be interesting to see if they adapt this for the show or if they keep them as rivals. According to the creative team, Soldier Boy is going to be way worse than Homelander, and I think we're going to see him attempting to take the position of the Seven Leader from the Blue Boy Scout. Well, he's not really a Boy Scout, is he? He's a bit of a bell end. <laughs> now, from the way the trailer is set up, it makes it seem like Queen Maeve goes to Butcher with both info on him and also the Compound V that we'll talk about later on. We get a scene in which it's revealed that the boys end up being the ones who discover his container at the end of the new look, which kind of contradicts some of the earlier theories I had. Though he's very much based on Captain America, I have got a lot of Winter Soldier vibes from him, especially due to his quote-unquote unthawing that there seems to be. Due to the missions that we see him in and the fact he's contained, I don't actually think that Vorda brought him out in order to negate the negative effects of Stormfront. I actually think that he got wrapped up in a lot of bad things and that they ended up jailing him. At one point we see his record flash on screen for a brief second, and this says that he was involved in racketeering with the New England La Cosa Nostra. La Cosa Nostra is what members of the Mafia refer to themselves as, so it seems like he got in bed with gangsters. It's also possible that he went crazy on a mission, and that could be the flashbacks that we see him popping up in. It looks like his powers are way beyond what Captain America has, and who knows, he might have been taking enhanced Compound V. We do see him firing concussive blasts from his chest, almost like Havoc from the X-Men, which makes me think that he has taken something else. Now this happens when he's out in the street and also at the end of the teaser. Kind of think he might have stepped outside the lines of what was expected of him and Vought just did whatever they could do in order to cover it up. There were newspaper clippings in the first teaser that referred to him as a fallen soldier, so Vought may have faked his death which would follow the same sort of lines as Steve Rogers. Now Stormfront was revealed to be a Nazi at the end of season 2 and, like I said, I think that may reveal this to Butcher to blow the whole conspiracy wide open. I did think initially that he'd be brought out in order for Vought to show they still have American ideals, but after this teaser, yeah, I'm completely casting those theories to the side. Homelander pretty much shows those ideals himself, so it just seems stupid that they bring out Soldier Boy in order to basically do the same thing with him. Now in the background, we can hear the song Heroes and Villains by the Beach Boys, and I love how this trailer sort of blurs the lines between that. You have Butcher being questioned over whether he's turning into the thing he hates, and they're potentially recruiting older soups in order to push this idea. The line between heroes and villains is blurred, and it makes for a great teaser. So, let me say it again, Cam. I may be a superhero, but I'm also just a man who fell in love with the wrong woman. Just a man who fell for the wrong woman. Uh, fell for the wrong uh, woman. But, but out of out crisis of, comes uh, change. Crisis. Out of crisis so, comes change. Uh, so I spent the last year really slowing, slowing down, down and, and reconnecting with myself. myself. And I am very excited for everyone to meet the real me. Now we open with Homelander on a PR circuit trying to spin everything about his and Stormfront's relationship. He appears on the Cameron Coulson show, the host of the Vault News videos that have been dropping on YouTube to discuss the characters at length. This whole thing just shows how scripted these kind of moves are, and I love how you have Stan Edgar looking at him sternly from the corner of the Dawn of the Seven premiere. Dawn of the Seven is the Batman v Superman parody we saw last season, and I really hope we get some glimpses at the finished product. Homelander says he's excited for people to meet the real him, and he's definitely gone off the deep end. In the comics, he ended up getting blackmailed by a mysterious party that showed him doing horrendous deeds that I won't spoil here, and this might end up being brought to the show. Slowly, this sent him more and more insane, and he just started murdering everyone and doing what he wanted. Starlight says he's lost his mind, and we catch him milking cows like I've been milking Doctor Strange videos. We also see him tenderly looking over a pool of blood on a hospital bed, and it might be that this belongs to Stormfront. She was badly messed up last season, so I think they're kind of showing that he still loves her, even though the PR stunts say differently. Hey, yo. We've been on the straight and narrow all year. No killing soups, no drinking, 
even follow Hugh Campbell's orders without strangling him. Now you're just being cruel. Or maybe you're not such an asshole. Now after the cuts of him in the mirror, we jump to Butcher, who's apparently been on the straight and narrow, apparently, allegedly. He goes out to meet Ryan, who's now out in the wilderness, still under the protection of the CIA and Mallory. He's clearly still hacked off though, and we see him throwing darts with Union Jacks on them. This has a bulldog head on them, and this is not only a nod to him being a British bulldog, but also his actual bulldog terror. Now the last time we saw Huey at the end of season 2 was when he was joining Victoria Newman's campaign trail. At the end of the second season, it was revealed that she was a vault plant within the government, and he will likely uncover this the closer he gets to her. Vic is based on the character Vic the Veep, who in the comics was also a vault plant as well. Unlike the show though, Victor didn't have any powers and Victoria might end up becoming one of the most powerful soups on earth if she's able to get into the White House. In the comics, Vought manipulated the political landscape so that Victor Veep became the president and we know that this show will be playing up recent events due to the rallies that we've seen in the teasers. This included a guy who was dressed up as Jason Chanley who stormed the Capitol building in America on January 6th. Looks like they're going really political with it this season and it might even be used as a way to usher Victoria into the White House. I can see this being what happens down the line due to the comics and they had a scene in which Homelander ripped off Vic's head, which would be ironic as she exploded lots of people throughout season 2. Now in this new teaser it seems like Huey's working at the Federal Bureau of Superhuman Affairs looking over everything. I think this will probably be how he learns about Victoria but it's a nice flip to have him in charge. Bloody power's gone to his head, sort of like the, the power's gone to Butcher. Pacha, pacha. Now he does seem to change as we get him talking about Butcher's way after realising Vought always wins if they play by the rules. The gloves are off. thought we could fight Vought the right way but we can't, it's all rigged. We have to do it your way. We also see Mother's Milk at the 10th birthday party for his daughter Janine. It's Seven themed and we catch the Deep Amongst the lineup as well. Later on we see Mother's Milk in a Stop the Violence t-shirt and huge shout out to everyone on our last video who pointed out that he always wears hip hop related clothing and this is a nod to KRS-One. Ashley is of course back and her hair continues to fall out. This is actually riffing on the comics in which Jessica Bradley also pulled her hair out too when she was stressed towards the end of the run. She seems to be banging the director. I think that come the end of the series she might be completely bald as this seems to be a recurring thing for her character. At one point Homelander seems to push someone off a building before he rides into the rally and I think this is likely him presenting that he's just stopped a supervillain when it was probably just a member of the public. Now Soldier Boy is the leader of a group called Payback who we got a movie poster for over the weekend when the trailer date announcement was released. I'm going to go over this with the characters for the next part of the video as it's probably easier explaining them this way and diving in and out of trailer shots. This contains all of the members including Soldier Boy at the front. We then have Black Noir on the top left and just below him is Gunpowder. Gunpowder in the comics was basically a Punisher parody who shot first and asked questions later and we know that Butcher will be fighting him at some point in the season when he's coming to grips with the Compound V flowing through his system. He's also based on Judge Dredd and the comics had him looking a lot closer to that character which sort of lines up with the design he has here. Gunpowder is probably going to be the first soups that Butcher kills and then he'll slowly work his way up the chain. We know from posts by Eric Kripke that the first episode will be called Payback and this will likely focus on the group and gathering them back together. However, Payback of course means getting revenge like I'll be doing if you don't hit the thumbs up on the video. Just, just hit the f***ing thumbs up. Just hit the f***ing thumbs up. Now in the comics, Stormfront was a major member of the group but with her being turned into Anakin Skywalker last season, Soldier Boy might want to get Payback on the boys. At the top of the TNT twins who are going to be parodies of the Wonder Twins from DC Comics. Those guys activate their powers by touching hands, much like how the pair do here. The next one seems like it might be the Ant-Man and Wasp parody Swatto that we got teasers towards in the first trailer when a guy literally exploded out of another guy's butt. I think that was riffing on the whole Thanos butt thing that people were doing for Endgame and I think it would be hilarious if he did that in the show. Now there might have actually been some hints towards Swatto in other episodes of the show. If you like Reaches, which you do, cause you're here. And that's why we're doing theory time, theory time, theory time. Okay, so when the boys season 1 and 2 drop, there were lots of fans that noticed a weird fly popping up on the screen. Inside I did a video and there's a couple of ones on YouTube discussing them popping up out of nowhere. I'd love it if this was retroactively made to be Swato and that he'd just been following the boys since the beginning, but that's the end of your time, your time, your time, your time. Now next is Crimson Countess who'll be played by Laurie Holden. She's basically a Scarlet Witch character and she's as chaotic as Wonder is which I swear isn't a pun. However, she's not really at the level that Wonder is now and after Multiverse of Madness, 
I think she might actually be a good guy in comparison to what Warner does in that film. Now, Countess can fire red orbs out of her hands in the show, but she can't really warp reality, otherwise she'd be pretty unstoppable. The last character is someone I'm a bit unsure of, but let me know below if you know who this is. Now, it does seem like Maeve might end up dying this season. We see her practicing with a sword at one point, and as we know, she's exposing a lot of things about Homelander. In the comics, she tried to kill the character with his sword, but it was revealed to be a prop, so it didn't work, and he brutally murdered her. Get lots of flashbacks of that very memorable moment when I see her practicing, and either she or Homelander is probably going to go down in this season. Now, the pop group that we see appearing could be Teenage Kicks, a team in the comics that were basically a parody of the Teen Titans. A-Train was a member of this group, and Starlight also dated one of the team called Drummer Boy. According to the behind-the-scenes info that we have on the show, this will be changed up slightly, and we'll get her ex Supersonic appearing in the series, who will be a speedster that also rivals my boy A-Train. A.K.A. the guy who doesn't mind running A-Train on your girl. Hey, goddamn, the puns are nice. Now, they seem to be teeny bob pop stars that have bought market to the kids, and it looks like they might even be a boy band, which is a nice twist on the comics. I kind of wonder if the Blarney Cock will also be a part of them like he was in the source material. In the comics, he was killed, and then because Compound B basically fires up your nervous system, he came back as one of the undead, which they might do with either him or Lamplighter, similar to the source material. Now, we also know that the season will have the events of Herogasm playing out in the show. This was actually a limited six-issue series within the comics that was basically just a sordid sex party for the soups. Annually, they'd kind of throw this event that basically allowed characters to let their hair down and have whatever their heart desired. Or it would create a cover story for the group where they'd say they'd gone off-world to fight intergalactic threats, but they'd really just done what my wife does with the milkman when they both go to Butlins. It looks like the Deep might even end up being at something like this, as he is checking out the sea life. Nice. Now lastly, the big thing we need to talk about is Butcher getting powers. The compound V that he takes is green, whereas the official one released by Vought is blue, making me think that this is a counterfeit one produced on the black market since the public found out about the truth. He shoots eye lasers similar to Homelander, and now has super strength. He's pretty much becoming a reflection of Homelander, and it's going to be really interesting to see how they handle his progression. I think it'll come down to either him killing Homelander, or possibly Ryan, who we know will be in this season. His mother Becky of course died in the last one, and he seems angry that things played out the way they did, so he could be looking for revenge. Might come down to him and Billy, the latter of which stops him from becoming the dark and twisted soups that Becky was worried about him turning into. Ryan was handed off to Mallory and the CIA, but it looks like he's going to come back into it at some point. Now, I want to get into some comic spoilers, so if you don't want anything from the source material ruined, then I recommend that you check out now. Please hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and also subscribe for coverage on the show every week. Okay, punks, so this is the real heavy spoilers part of the show, but in the comics, after Homelander was defeated, Butcher revealed his true plan, and we learned that he was actually also somewhat of a villain. He continued killing soups, and because the boys had all taken Compound V, this included them. He murdered Mother's Milk, Frenchie, and also the female, who in the comics is basically the counterpart to Kimiko. Billy ended up going head-to-head -head with Huey at the end of the book, and the latter won, though it was clear Butcher kinda let him do it. Billy's brother Lenny was always the person that kept him on the straight and narrow, but after his death, Butcher became a wild card. That's why he ended up taking Huey under his wing, because he viewed him as being similar to his brother, who'd always held him back from going over the deep end. Butcher left Huey alive until the very end for this exact reason, and he allowed himself to be stopped by Huey before he could carry out his plan to kill old soups. That might be where the show is going, might not be, but I thought I'd save that for the spoiler part of the video, in case you didn't want to know. Anyway, that's the trailer, and with the show being less than three weeks away, I cannot wait to watch it. This season looks like it's going to be bringing back all the gore, political intrigue, satire, and comedy, the previous entries have had and I can't wait to see it play out. Gonna be a great season I think and there's gonna be so much stuff from the comics they can adapt to really knock this out of the park. Let me know your comments below and just to let you know we're running a competition right now and giving away three copies of the Batman on the 15th of June. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the trailer. We pick the comments at random on that day and the winners of the last one are on screen right now if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which will be linked on screen right now. We break down the entire thing, and it's definitely worth checking out if you have any questions over that movie. Without the way, thanks for sitting through the video. I'm Ian Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.